torn in between wanting to please God and wanting to please yourself. You want to please God, but at the same time, it's just really hard. You have all these temptations throughout the week that make your body feel good. They're oxy or pills are a big thing that run this country. Temptation of getting high might be high for some of you. That might be a real temptation. There are other temptations that plague your life. Name them. How many times does that distract you from serving God? How many times does that pull your attention away from serving God? My answer to the initial question is yes. I know how it feels to be torn in between serving God and serving myself. And if you answered no, I'm praying for you. Yes, I know how it feels. I know that serving God is right. I know that serving God is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm a Christian after all. I bear the name of Christian. I bear the title of Christian. I'm supposed to serve God. But at the same time, indulging in those worldly passions is fun. It's appealing. It's exciting. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing, though. Because these two paths are so distant from each other, serving God can, is way over here and serving yourself is way over here. Because they're so distant from each other, it makes it feel like God is distant sometimes when you're being tempted. You feel like the farther that you go down this road over here of serving yourself, the farther you get from God being over here. God is near, always. God wants to help you, always. But do you want God to help you? Do you want to humble yourself and let him in? In the midst of explaining struggles, Paul tells the Corinthians that God is with them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verses 12 and 13, we read that God is there to help. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 and 13. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The Corinthians were not a perfect church. We're not a perfect church. We all have our struggles. God never struggles, though. God never struggles to keep up with us. We have our problems. God is right there the entire time to help us. And Paul wants the Corinthians to know that. There's a problem, though. In verse 12, we read, no, uh, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. We're alluded to this illusion of, I'm going to do it all by myself. I can handle this all on my own, and I don't need to ask God. I don't need to ask the brethren of anything because I can do it by myself. We all tried to live without God one time before we became Christians. How did that work out? We all eventually came crawling back to him. I as a Christian still come crawling back to him. God forgive me time after time again for my foolishness. We tried to live without him. How did that work out? In 1 John, in chapter 2, we read that the pride of life is a problem. If you would turn with me to 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 15. 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it is from the world. This idea of me, 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 I have to please me or I have to do this by myself, God won't help me, that's a selfish thing. That is an issue of pride. Pride stands in between you and saying, hey, I need help with this. If you can't humble yourself, That is pride in between you and God. That is not godly. That's not a godly attitude to have. And if we're trying to be like him, we should be trying to get rid of the pride. 
In verse 32 of Daniel chapter 4, God tells King Nebuchadnezzar, I give the kingdom to who I want to give the kingdom. In, an, in other words, I allow you to gain where I want you to gain. You are brought up where I want you to be brought up. You are brought down where I want you to be brought down to humble you. This issue of pride is not from God. God has granted me the ability to do some things on my own, yes. I acknowledge that. But ultimately, it is him who I have to rely on. It is him who I come calling back to. God, I need help with this. I need you to aid me in this aspect of my life because I'm struggling with it. Ultimately, I rely on him. We have to have the humility to see that. We have to have the humility to admit that we need God in our life because God is in control always, no matter what. In verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 10, we read of a more positive message than one of pride. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you will be able to endure it. Right off the bat, we see we're not alone. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Every Christian has had problems. And I bet you more than once, we have all shared a problem. We have all struggled with a sin that another brother has struggled with. While that is a terrible thing that we have sinned. Well, that's a terrible thing. There's a great thing to be seen there. We have a sense of togetherness. We have a sense of camaraderie. We have a sense of a support group. Because we all struggle. Because we all, some of us struggle with the same things. We all have a family. You're sitting next to your family. Some of you are sitting next to your blood family. But we are all brought together by the blood of Christ. We have found a family because of our struggles. We have found a family because we want to get rid of our struggles. God also knows what you're going through. We read, no temptation has overtaken you. That, he is not com that is not common to man because God is faithful. God knows what you're going through. He will not leave you. He will support you the entire way. God also cares. The second half of verse 13, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escaping that, that you may be able to endure. He gives us protection because he knows that we can't do this without him. He is there to hear our problems. He is there to build us up. He is there to protect us. In Genesis chapter 50, we read of Joseph and God protecting him, God watching over him and giving him strength. If you would, turn with me to Genesis chapter 50 and verse 16. Genesis 50 and 16. Now, Joseph had been enduring many problems. He had been thrown into a pit by his brothers. He had been sold into slavery. He had been taken off to a strange land he'd never seen before. And yet in all of this, through all the false accusation from his master's wife, God elevated him. Never once did Joseph doubt his God. Never once did, jo did Joseph curse his God. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 16. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father has gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers in their sin, because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Through all of this, you wanted to persecute me. But God meant it for good. Through all of this, the world wants to persecute you, but God wants to lift you up. God wants to help you. 
where is your faith at? Is it in God or is it in yourself? Is it in the pride of pleasing yourself or is it, is it humble enough to serve God and to ask God to help you? God delivered Joseph because his faith was in God. He also gave Joseph strength. He was made second only to the king of Egypt at the time. What I see there is a desire to overcome. Joseph didn't want to be in the position that he was in. He wanted to be out of there. I don't want to be in the bad positions that I get in either. I want to get out of there. I want to overcome my temptation. I want to overcome my struggles and get to a better place. In the second half of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we read that we can endure. God will help us to endure. God can help us to endure. And I desire to endure with my God. I desire to let Him help me. But at the same time, I have a desire to sin. I have temptation to sin. Now all the time, it's not a bleeding desire like I have to have this. But it's still there all the time. And perhaps it is that sometimes we don't want to overcome temptation. We know that God is there. We say that we want Him to help us. But maybe it is we just don't want Him to help us. We just don't want to overcome temptation. After all, sin is enticing. Sin is pretty. It's, it looks beautiful at first sight. It seems like a good idea when you're going through it. And afterwards, you see your fault. It's an attitude of self-focus. That is, pleasing yourself rather than pleasing God. Do you desire to sin? I hope not. God offers us the way to overcome. God doesn't want to see us sin. God doesn't want to see us fail. He would have it that we overcome. It would be a much better thing for us to overcome. And God offers that to you. A prideful and self-reliant heart is not the way to God. This attitude of, I'm fine, I don't need it, I'm going to save myself, and I'm going to do it my way. That is not how we come to God. Asking God to help us. Doing, humbling ourselves to the position of doing what He would have us to do is how we come to God. But you have to humble yourself enough to let Him take control first. You have to humble yourself enough to let Him take control and for Him to help you. If it is that you've been prideful and you haven't asked God for much help, I'm praying for you. If it is that you want God more in your life and you want God to help you with more things, all it takes is, well, not all it takes, but a good starting point is leaving your pride behind and humbling yourself to see your fault and to ask God for help with your fault. If you need help, let us know. If you need help, let God know. And a good time would be to come forward as we stand and sing.